Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Imperator Rome Thebes. And I'm sure you've probably heard of the news because I caught it. Even though on this day of recording it is the 1st of February. And then you're watching it on the February 2nd or on a later date. I almost said February 2nd, Groundhog Day, which is, of course, it's an American thing where I live. But, anyways, you know, in two weeks. On February 16th, 2021, that is the day the next big update for Imperator Rome comes out. Marius, as it's called, along with the Heirs of Alexander DLC. Which, of course, I'll be getting that, but... What does this mean for the future of the Theban series? Well, not much, honestly, because... It is 103 BC, where we are now, but, um... You could say, oh, there's plenty of time. Two weeks, we can finish this series in no time. Because, you know, there's still a few things I want to do in terms of where is the Hellenic League going to expand next? Well, for one, parts of Egypt, a part of North Africa, and, of course, who could forget um, Italia? Because we want that part, too. But, fortunately, um... We won a great victory against the Romans, in which we have now established a foothold in Magna Graecia. Although this has been depopulated, unfortunately. So the armies are marching, well, force marched their way back here. Because, you know, we've won a great victory here. Now let's uh, make some adjustments before we appoint the governor. Switching the provincial capitals to areas of my liking. This is a bigger city. Gotta put it in proton. You know, they all used to be Italian territory. There's still a few Italians left, but not as prone as there once were. Because they're all Latinized. So, as the armies are marching towards, you know, these areas, especially when we get our uh, ships back to port so that way we can you know put it back in their usual posts especially the own especially my own army that I personally command and also during the course of that Roman war two generals got the two nicknames the Italiote Greek word for Italian as in you know from that area even the Egyptian honor guard, um, Ibi, which also became known as the Italiote. And because of the newly won territory, this will put that here, since we don't have this in our control yet. Now let's appoint the governor of Magrisia, or in Greek, Miguel Halas. The real question is who's qualified, and the better question is who is not corrupt. Colchian. <laughs> that'll be a, that'll be the day. Laugh. It'll be him, because he's not corrupt, but it's a to go a long way, and with him as founder, local citizen output would be added there. Yeah, it's probably a strange sight to see mostly Roman residents to see this man as their governor. And plus, he's a former slave. Yeah, he went from slave to governor. Ain't that something? That just adds popularity. 
not more loyalty towards me. Let me see the families. Like, how many positions do we have? Remember, we're the ruler in Aristodemon. The Karikids are always more prestigious than us. Which, again, they come from a long line. Not to mention the power base wars, ours is a bit weaker. And how we have a habit of getting characters who are, you know, it's like, oh, this is a great character. I would love to, love to have him to adopt in our family until, nope, someone else got it. Thinking about adopting you, but of course it would lose prestige and we would lose legitimacy. Well, I guess we can't do that. Oh, and that's another thing. Despite the fact that we won a great victory over the Romans, we had a transition of power recently. This is uh, Aristobulus, our new basilisk, 51. We didn't get to know him that much, other than he was just commanding an army. He's a scholar, not a fighter. And as the governor of Greece and ruler, so it'll up the research points and technology speed. He's closer, so definitely not a military man. If he wasn't either of these, he would have had a decent base of two. Too decent as an understatement. But it does help with the reinforcement and armor, army morale recovery for the army I take command of. Even though the army I command is mainly infantry support during the big battles. Also self-controlled, so that ups the zeal a bit. I'm also abrasive, which those subjects won't like us that much, and I can have another rival. More rivals if I need to. Ah, oh, what the heck. Um, for a moment, um, I thought I just felt like something just stabbed me under my shoe, onto my toe. Somebody was trying to assassinate me right as I was doing this episode. Anyways. This is our new ruler, and this is a succession crisis that we're under now. I say succession crisis because this is our heir, at least for now, is Heraclea. Which, she's better than everything that I am at. And she is assertive, so she is quick in thought, word, and deed. Uh, she knows the best way to navigate most situations. And... What's the birthday? In three years' time, uh, which again, as good as her marshal is, and we know that women cannot lead an army. So, if she needs something that is more of, it would be the charisma. Charisma, more charisma means popularity, and more to get behind him. But do we really want her to be the future of the Hellenic League? I mean, Brother Alexandros um, is a rebellious one. He's against me in every way, and he's an ambitious man, and this was a popular successor. Which, by all accounts, he should have been the basilisk. Not I, but Father just could not intervene on who's better at what, but... But for now, because of this, legitimacy went down, and... More so with the negative stability. But I have the popularity because I was out there in the front lines. I was out there in the front lines of Magda Grecia and Italia. But now here's the real kicker. My consort, Isadora, has nothing. And she's a lunatic. And I will soon make a decision real quick on... Should we either get rid of her now and get a new wife, a younger wife, younger spouse, younger consort? So that way I may have a chance to have a son. But the problem is, I'm 51. And if we get rid of her and, then, and it takes time for pregnancies to occur, then and you have another child and it would be a son. And if his rule were to begin, he would be very young. Do you want to risk it? Do you want to risk having a son or a 
hopefully well-educated um, daughter of mine to be the future of the Hellenic League. And she would be ruling the Hellenic League in a not only instability, but also this vast amount of land that we hold. This huge, um, near empire sized country. I mean, it is not officially an empire because we're not at that point yet. No, you need more territories than that. I thank you for reminding me of places you need to take over if you were to reunite Alexander's empire. Because I was thinking our next course of action should be against Egypt, where I still want Amun for reasons. Let me see. We don't have any claims on against Egypt, but we'll make it so. Start here. And also our old enemy, Carthage, and, and I still want those city-states. But the loyalties, they're still behind them. Unfortunately. You know, we could still pick them off bit by bit. But however, that costs another 20. Although I would love to fight against Carthage again, but if I want areas, it would just to hold more of Africa. In other words, this, this, and this. Basically just extended the borders in Africa a bit. But all these coastal cities, all, they're all pretty important to us. But again, they get most of their manpower from Iberia. Which, again, they're still a formidable um, entity. So in this case, um, start with here. I'll come back in a few months. And also we're in need of new admirals. Which fortunately we have one. We originally brought this man over here to be of the... Uh... Oh, he's a young man, so... Maybe he should be a land general, not an admiral. I need to speak to people. Oh, no. I need someone to stick by me. And who's our other admiral? Five. Oh, crap. Just wait till one of the old generals pass. And then we'll find a... admiral. But again, we're not at war yet. This is just barely the beginning of the post-war years. And also in the middle of the succession crisis. We didn't quite exactly divide the Roman territory there, because there's this unpopulated area. Which is like, uh, boy, would that be the most disputed area in the world right now, in the Mosia region, part of Mosia. Where Dardania wants it, Rome wants it, Tribalia, or Tribalia. territory. We recently liberated or released um, Dardania. I know they don't look highly upon us even though we helped them with their liberation but I would love to have them as a client state or tribal vassal I should say. 
Which again? Travel vassals subject travel subject of a civilized nation gives a portion of monthly manpower income to the war in exchange for protection and bonus system. They do not use diplomatic spawn, it cannot be integrated off diplomatically. And they're not automatically called to the overlord's wars. In order receives bonus to travel population happiness. Well, it's a settled tribe. Again, should I risk it for a possibility of a even younger son? Or a well-educated donor? My health is fine, but not hers. Shall we wait until her health withers away? Again, the only way to divorce your spouse is to bring her on trial. But there's already, you know, enough tyranny than, than it makes out to be. So I probably should just wait it out a little. Don't rush today. <sighs> A lot of starving populations because some of the areas we conquered and some of the areas that we neglect to you know, hold. We'll just wait for the ships to arrive and we'll be sent back to our original posts. Well, meanwhile, Alexandros will continue to roam around and, um, well. Uh, as long as he doesn't rebel, we can either encourage deserters or seize his assets. They're not present to protect him because he's out leading an army. It would make me corrupt, but we get a tiny bit of profit, but he's already disloyal than there is to be. Got no holdings. Oh my goodness. But I believe there is, if, whenever he dies of old age, most likely. Split up, get taken up to space. You're all gonna leave one at a time, huh? Ionia. Oh my goodness. All because of starving population. Critical food supply. Can't do anything about that. Even though if you want to solve this problem, you integrate Ionia in, but I can't risk um, integrating everybody there. Not only would add up to territory and economy, but we would just risk losing, you know, some support during these um, future conflicts. So I gotta get over there, personally. I'm requesting pickup. Take me to Ionia. I gotta get these people settled down. Even though don't overstay welcome because, you know, the food situation. And if they do rebel, we'll put him down. Swiftly. No, no, no. We got enough money, so we just gotta play stockpile. So what the hell is... 
Lower that port maintenance. What's with the downturn of the economy lately? I don't know if we should lower army maintenance. But the rebellion's gone away. Okay, never mind. They're just... Well, they starved out enough for to begin a recovery period. Still trying to sort out, okay, who's going to go where? Here comes the fast transport. Okay, there's a bunch of dissolved provinces. the Punic people. They still have not forgiven us for heavily looting them. That's the discontent. Hmm. Well, instead of going to Phrygia, I'm going to Kakhadon. Kark 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 Need to get them together. Anyone else want to come on board? But you. These two armies will be sent to Asia Minor. Let's see and work your way up. The army with the largest amount of elephants um, will remain here. And that one is the army that's going to return to North Africa. That's the original post, the one with the cavalry army. Camels. And you're going to be sent back to Greece somewhere. You got all the bases covered. Epirus, in particular. Just scattering them while we leave one army in Magna Grecia. Alright, I'm here. So we'll increase all to by five. Well visitation. There we go. Now listen, Governor, if you want them to to be on your side again, give them harsh treatment. I know it contributes very little, but my presence here will make them work. Now, is there anything around here that would help the provincial loyalty?
believe the best way to do it is to make people happy by giving them all these amenities. But again, Punic people are very hard to please because many reasons. Harsh treatment is one thing, and the other is it's this is a very dominant culture in North Africa, and it's not an integrated culture. And I, for some time, have considered uh, making a Punix a uh, recognized um, integrated culture. But um, is there room for it? Because the number of integrated cultures would go up if we were to include the Punix. Because after all, they're the third largest minority in the Hellenic League. And if you were to integrate them now, the Nali would add up plus five to culture happiness, but um, each integrated, integrated culture reduces from four. So that'll be 16 minus 16. And also part of that is because they're not in the honor guards. I don't think it'll be that bad. If we can go for one more. Now here's the real kicker. I'm going to play stability change. Ah. Tell you what. each month or we can make it go away faster or enact some different decision just to keep them appeased with this you know rowdy punic people I mean, not that they would get even mad, but but if you do any of those, you're going to drop the stability. While uh, giving them rights would just it will not cause stability, but it will cause stability change to lower in the long run, which we haven't got to that point yet because of the aggressive expansion and the lack of zeal. We're just going to have to deal with that for a while. So instead of a turbulent Phrygia region, now I'm going to remain here. So this matter is dealt with. So what can we do with them locally? What trade, bo trade goods we can buy? Because everybody's unhappy and we cannot ignore them. There's very few Hellenics here. Speaking of which, um... This is just the beginning of Hellenization of this area. We can get the Freeman. Just give them what they want, alright? Anything. Oh, really? Okay. I mean, we can at least just try to please one type of population. I usually don't do this stuff, but this is just to prevent rebellions. Because I never had a rebellion occur to me, ever. For one more. It's enough for now, but 
We just want to get them on our side. But at the same time, I am trying to reduce the uh, tyranny level. At least for... Okay. Next spring. Putting my wife on trial. This coming spring. But now lower the fleet maintenance. Uh, Cleo sent word she's fallen ill. Perhaps she's well enough she will seek terminal in this. What? Inflammation. Oh no, not now. She's my only child. I'll get her to seek treatment. But well, we're gonna start making money soon. Since we're in post war years now. We're sending everybody home to various areas. To Serenica with you. So again, our next war will likely be against Egypt while we wait for the peace deal with Rome that'll expire. That guy's nothing. What the hell is he? Go merge with the rest. Okay, you're taking a uh, Gordian that used to be the original garrison of the Vassalus army. You'll be heading up there. Freeman are happy, but citizens are not. Slow them down. And you're not so you're not corrupt. But again, largely punic. That's why I believe the best way to prevent rebellion is to, again, they're the third largest majority in the, um, Hellenic League, so they have to be an integrated culture. We can't ignore them anymore. Plus, they'll slowly come. This, well, they're not going anywhere. Even though it's in a bad area. Or if we want the rest of this, we have to fight against Parnia. going to get this part. Yeah, it's hard to keep. It, the bigger the country, the more it's hard to keep under control. Never had this occur to me before. Especially in my last playthrough with uh, Massalia, where we were a minority living in a land full of majorities. He was the philosopher. Loving and wise, if you say so. Yeah, there to be stationed in Serenica in case of desert barbarians. Which they could just come up at any time. But there's some civilization value. Next to here. But civilization has not been reached now. Who's my? Because I was about to say, since you're, 
since it's my child seeks treatment, then you're the one that's gonna take care of her. Oh dear. Do you think perhaps I may have made a mistake unless we change it immediately to someone more qualified like him? The statesmanship is there. But he's reached to his fullest potential. Screw it. You may be young, but... You better get to work on it, alright? You're the new precision. Also, we're a bit behind schedule on the trial. Because I'm gonna put her on trial right now because... Can't wait for Lunacy to get away while the child is sick and uh, and I fear the potential uh, decision to, you know, screw up the treatment. Waiting for register. Oh, no, thank you. Okay, it can have a medical consequence, and that's what I fear. Okay, this ain't gonna kill her, it's just I fear they may botch it and it would. Just one of the skills. <sighs> Too bad I can't bribe her, you know, just to try to make her a little more corrupt, so it'll be easier to, you know, put on a job because of corruption said character. But well, here's to increase tyranny. And it's the only way to get a divorce in this game. So the atmosphere is dark in a court as Isadora um, Akatz, the accused, is brought head hanging before the vassals. Isadora, a well-loved and competent leader, has finally, uh, has finally gone one step too far. She's a lunatic! <laughs> uh, Keen to expedite Charlie, Exarch formally addresses vassals Aristobulus, asking what crimes she stands accused of. What the? And also, this is a poor excuse to say that this is an abuse of office, even though she's done nothing wrong. She's honest, tolerant. But over the years, she did become selfish, and then she became a lunatic, and during her lunacy, she became assertive. The dumb charge. During a dull and frankly amateurish defense, Isidore works himself into a quite tricky situation. We remain unsure quite how, rather than professing innocence, Isidore seems to have mistakenly assumed she was acting on the behalf of the prosecution and has accused of some of the wide variety of crimes. Now maybe a good chance to push the advantage. Well, she's not thinking clearly. She's a lunatic. What did I tell you? So, invest in a few favors and turn this to a win. And the Mr. rounds the self congratulatory monologue. She pauses with dramatic effect, wheeling around. She points directly at Minnie's um, category, who happens to be attending the court. In a shaky voice, Isidore accuses Minnie's of masterminding the whole affair, leading much of the court joining her side. It's the general of the first army to, who stationed the Magda Degrees with the elephants. Oh, hell. But I like my chance, 78, so I'll just say nonsense. Minis is an honorable man. He helped us in the victory against the Romans. The court falls deathly sound as the magic clears his throne, falters, and pipes on the reading voice. Finds Isidora, he gets to say, guilty of all charges. The entire building shakes as the upper wall present. The court guards see Isidora and march away in the dungeon. Her fate is ours to decide now. Success! And that means, there you go. It's, that's how you do a divorce in this game. Because there's no such thing as that, apparently, but... I don't know. They should have divorce spouse feature in, in the upcoming update. I mean, I don't know if they have it. Most likely not, because it's a... Nobody ever brought that up. Because they just enjoy all these country conquests and missions and all that, but not the intimate parts of family life in a monarchy. Whereas you don't worry about that in a republic. 
Look, I am unsure about what's going to happen to my daughter with this treatment, but I am becoming increasingly not in confidence and need to move to one young. Age. Um, who's got good skills and is a childbearing age. But the real question is, so again, uh, anything that's better than three and well, better than all, in fact. That's what I need. So look again. Remember these requirements. Problem is, I'm not gonna have much from this. If I decide to concern, you mean none. What does finesse contribute to again? Uh, okay, here it is. Uh, finesse represents character skills and disciplines and require high attention to detail. High finesse characters make sense of research as it goes. So. Even though I am not it. Help me with the charisma. I can have the zeal. I would love to have a little more zeal in theory. You want to go with no finesse and go for more zeal and charisma with a bit of martial? Or do you want somebody more experienced? somebody young so you have a much better chance of having more children at this late part of life even though it's likely I'll live up to in my 70s which is typical but our cursor can be improved upon once she gets better from that health Thinking her, even though charisma is not there, but can be approved upon if she gets well. A little bit of martial helps for the max manpower and reinforcements, which, by the way, really increased since we took my Greasy. You know what? Give me her. After careful deliberation assessment, potential spouses and a great deal of research to various blood and services. Aristobulus summoned his aides and mission offered an offer of marriage to Aristodica of the Aristodemon dynasty. I failed to notice that. Um, the envoy reports proposal whilst flattering broke a great deal of amusement from Aristodica and her companions, who made no effort to conceal the contempt regarding the advanced age of Aristobulus. I have considered yielding a sizable dowry of Aristobulus is to find love at such a distant gap of age and experience. Who are you related to? Oh! That's my niece! I failed to notice that! Daughter of Alexandros. I failed to realize that. Uh, that sounds awkward, isn't it? I am marrying Alexandros' uh, daughter, who is my niece, because I'm desperate for children and I would love to have a son before all Hades breaks loose or something. Oh my god! You want me to spend that much money? There's penalties when you are in debt. I guess we'll look first elsewhere for love, so not hurt. Then.
I guess so. 32, but it's still trying to range, but she's got all the skills. Rather than wait for improved upon. So that would have been my second pick. And it's from that other family. No inbreeding. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. So, while Aristobos has enjoyed life immensely as a man of leisure, he summoned an envoy this morning to deliver a proposal of marriage to the Procrit. What is that word? I've never seen that wonderful young woman. Uh, but in hoping to produce heirs and further legitimize the Aristodem dynasty. Unfortunately, the envoy reports the head of the Hercule dynasty, Scaris de Taliote, is a vocal critic of our rule. It's made it clear he will not allow this union under any circumstance. We expect, expect this may be key to, or just a keen, be a keen negotiating position. We will have to offer a great deal more than we had hoped if we win the heart of the stunning. Oh my god, what is the matter with you? You greedy bastard. Yo! That would put us even deeper in them. God damn it. Okay, that's it. Just... I don't care. Find me anyone, alright? But pick a family. Head. Marriage contracts are never entered in lightly. Tradition is how two families are bond together, not just in matrimony, but also in political alliance. The spirit of king continues long going. The marriage of Aristobos is to demons, therefore, a matter of state. No kidding. Regular search has begun for a suitable match among the many relatives of the Gautaman family. Uh, a Gautaman, I don't know why I say Gautaman. Um, however, distant, one suitable match will be found appropriately um, Gautaman. Um, we'll be approaching off our marriage. Well, I don't know if you have any... Because... There's no such thing. Well... Next year, maybe this could be the one. And I forgot, where are you descended from? Oh, yeah, Karians. I think we will have a spouse by next year, so be patient, alright? Don't be so rakish. Guilt by association. Save up that money. That is a technology that is a must have. We need this much. Yes, I got rid of that old bag of mine, but meanwhile I'm desperate spouse and looks like I found one. You know, lower the army maintenance too. Just get as much money as you can. Thank the gods. She'll be all right. And don't forget to check your court tutor when that time comes. Something at least. Huh? They set up the local taxi. Okay. And we're trying to get rid of the tyranny still. And to get the stability up. In fact, it's that low stability is what's causing all that uh, turmoil throughout the provinces. Now it's going the other way around. Oh, it's time for me to pay my visit.
Yeah, going on a cross-country tour in order to get the provincial loyalty up. Oh yeah, if it reaches zero, they may attempt to rebel. Them too. Royal visitation for 24 months. It's not enough, but it'll stop. something for the nobles. There we go. That was slowing down a little. When we get more of that political influence, we'll most definitely integrate the Punics in. Because they'll be right pleased. Even though they'd never forgiven us. But soon they'll come around. Which again, it'll cost you five in political influence. Stability change will drop. That's increasing population influence, but the other integrated cultures won't be as happy as much. Particularly the Egyptians, the Phrygians, and the Iberos. Just wait a while, all right? Ah, uh, he's all right. Stand there, because I noticed that attrition. What's Rome up to? Nothing. They're just rebuilding their navy, that's all. Again, the empire is so big that we just can't watch over any everything. Now I'm putting myself out there. No corrupt governors here. And this has no buildings. And yet this is the capital of the uh, of the province. National free and happiness to prevent rebellions or money? What's more important to you? I'll risk it. Money. We only understand warfare these days. Tyranny does not affect population happiness, but it does affect the rest of the civil war and loyalty characters and all that. We probably want to stop doing that. We gotta get this back together. Alright? So we can start building buildings. Um, these are going to remain stationed over there. Bluster of excitement, Aristobulus summon us domesticate. Far too long, uh, after far too long alone, he decided to extend off of the marriage to the stunning young maiden. Arazetta of the Gaumantid dynasty. With regret, our envoy brings news that the head of house stepped in to raise issues with this proposal, setting a great gap in age. Of course, I'm an old man. Old guys need love too. So clearly, he's attempting to get us one out of us to dowry. Oh dear, how much do I have to pay you? Okay, but how is she? Well, shouldn't be surprised, but the finesse will help. Chris, not so much, but 
zeal. That's what we're lacking. You give a little more um, ruler zeal, that adds up to the stability. And apparently, it's, it's probably adopted. It's probably the little one, but she's a Karin, but she's Hellenic. That's the most important thing. I mean, I was, you know, looking forward to. But I would love that for the Dwarf Prince. I mean, to me, she's the better one. Although she has a lisp, but. She's a jealous type. But who am I to judge? I didn't get a good looking person. Um, you're self controlled. Um, Eta Zeta. That's how you say your name. Excuse me. Eta Zeta. I assume that's how you pronounce that. Anna told me your name. And she is honest. Great. Another honest woman. But. I do have some gold to spare, so this suitable young woman is found amongst the many branches of the government family. And this will increase the loyalty. So, ah, so there you have it. Quite possibly the strangest marriage <laughs> proposal we've ever... I mean, after looking for love, I mean... <laughs> Aristobulus at 54 and Atazeta at 17. She was born on the 20th of June. Would it be... I don't know if they're going to question that. Should I have a son to change the line of succession? That would mean for the first time that we would have somebody who is half Greek and half Karian. So it does help. And this better than nothing. This is what the finesse is for. It's to add up the national commerce income and reduce build costs. It's taking a long time for them to recover that manpower, even though we're still relatively quite close. What's their max manpower? 98,000. We really mauled them badly by taking them out of Greece here. That's why I'm most anxious to start another war. To get this, this, and uh, the Italia region as a whole. Minus Sardinia and Corsica that is still under Carthaginian control. As well as our intentions of getting Egypt. Fighting against the uh, Aksumites. Too bad I can't go to Father Noah. I'm on. Here it is. Cavalry morale. And in addition. We also have this. So, cavalry morale up, and heavy cavalry discipline up. So, for the near future of whatever military judges we'll get, we'll go down this route. Especially that we want this. Heavy infantry maintenance cost, because that's been a thorn on the side of the Theban heritage. You know, it makes a little difference because of the great economy you have now, even with reduced maintenance. Let me see. The commander of one of our most prestigious armies, Menendemos, uh, has 
present a request to be acknowledged officially as a man and recognized in all the stature. This sudden outrageous demand was covered by the public proclamation of inequities of our own royal house, surely harm our standing to exceed this demand. Because we are bound by circumstance. He has the gout. But I don't want the stability drop, so... Ah. With low legitimacy, you better get that up immediately. They're back. This is why we had them stationed there. Even though we have low maintenance, but... The numbers will defeat them. See how it goes it. Like them. Even with low army maintenance. And stay out. Let's do this. The Punics will be an integrated culture. This will make them a bit happier, and this is just to prevent rebellions. <laughs> Which again, we can't watch over everything, but we can sure try to please them. At the expense of the other integrated cultures. Should we have it in business? Ah. You want to become rich? So in other words, this would help her be corrupt, but... Don't do that. Um, you don't want to be rich because that would corrupt your mind. In a way. Also, keep an eye on her. So, if you want to be a rich girl, well, let me see. Scholar, polymath, humble. Oh, he's a perfect tutor. Okay, our royal tutor has been summoned to educate the reluctant young Heraclea uh, in a manner of our choosing. The nature of a tutor is most important indeed, should we choose the attendant to their subject carefully. Which, again, women cannot rule. Uh, well, women cannot lead an army, I should say. They can rule, but they cannot lead an army. It's just the way it is. Unless you have, uh, mixed gender, uh, rules on the star of a plate. But again, my tutor is none of these, so. So you should study in orientation and commerce. It would be good to see you have more charisma. Because you see, in charisma, it contributes to less tyranny and uh, faster claim fabrication speed. It would work best for an ideal female ruler, in my opinion. Or, alternatively, um, if you want more stability, you got to have a high zeal. Go for a more religious focus thing. But making a rich would help so corrupt them. Once add more finesse. Or perhaps Marshall is the way to go. I mean, she has four. But, but again, army morale recovery would do very good for the country because now that we have a habit of fighting in major wars now. Again, I'm a bit conflicted. What education should she receive? Because to me, it would either be Marshall or. Orientation and commerce, because to me, those are the most important ones. But to me, the national commerce is probably least important because look at the size of our country and the amount of profits we gain. 
It's fine. And we don't build that much buildings anyhow. But for now, she's got a high finesse. But she lacks charisma, unless she marries somebody who's got high charisma. She doesn't have much of zeal either. But we have a habit of having low martial rulers. So. But again, she would pick up a martial trait which she wouldn't lead in army anyhow. Like she would rather marry a general. I think ultimately we'll go for irritation comes. In other words, she'll become politician, so there's a chance she'll get one charisma, low chance of getting two, and a low chance of losing any of those. And we'll gain a random personality trait. Hopefully have either Silver Tongue or the Orator tree, which would be excellent. Huh? Forgotten documents? During this regular sense of the glorious monster containing the remains of Alexander, Kalas claims to have come across a wide variety of documents detailing the links between the members of her own elite and the great dwarf himself. Many claim these documents are spurious, but the mere existence of them is surely enough to reinforce the conquer in the same manner as Alexander. Um, is this relates to the researching lineage? That's two percent. Is this the lucky day? Oh, that's for all the countries. Um, Alexander's legacy. Oh, that's just something else. Anyways. But again, she's my only child, I'll try to educate as much as we can. Unless we have a son to get her. And it would also cause problems when you have an even younger um, child to potentially rule the Hellenic League. And chaos would break out, especially with Alexandros. Or even Heracles. There So I told her to no, stop being corrupt. And soon uh, we'll be saving our money to have this for a slightly faster monthly corruption reduction. Because corruption is no good to nobody. city's got enough to uh, become a metropolis again if we got enough uh, political influence. It was a metropolis so we sacked the heck out of it. But we can make it a metropolis again if we wish to. It'll do good to the economy and the people there. Especially that they are slowly being integrated to our culture. Uh, integrated. With the rising prominence and social status of the people of Punic descent, the established citizenry is increasingly finding its purposes and probes upon. As it might have been foreseen, they are becoming increasingly anxious and resentful and face this new social competition by a people who not too long ago were deemed to be inferior. Again, this is falling over the form of public and sometimes violent quarrels with the Punic people and vocal protests against the policy of integration. Deny them privileges while we get our privileges protected for the uh, Bilshan Greeks and the uh, 
Baharics, Phrygians, and Iberians. Do we really need to make the Punics mad and never? We're trying to help them. Well, they will learn to treat them as well as citizens eventually, so... We're gonna reject our, those complaints and defend Punic rights. It's only gonna be for five years. Trying to turn them around. Again, when you have the mouse highlighted over your spouse, you will know if the character is pregnant or not, and you would know the due date. So that's when you know. So that's why I have it highlighted, David. While I'm also keeping an eye on, because each month she could have it adjusted. If not, then it's going to be what it's going to be. And hopefully pick up a good personality trait. I hope either Silver Tongue or Thorga. Because persuading is better than bribing. But still want to have a son for ordinary reasons. with the damn veggie tables. Veggie tables. Heard that from another person. How are they doing these days? Rome's not at war because they're still in recovery, which we could definitely take advantage of them. While we can most definitely take advantage of Egypt. Oh, hell. It's this again. Ionia. Starving out again. One of these days. We need to move them out of here. Or alternatively, put the slave somewhere else. And the other alternative is to integrate Ionia. But we would, you know risk a couple of things. Not only you lose a source of reinforcements, but also a source of looking for potential, you know, good generals or admirals that we can find for high martial characters. Not everybody has to be Hellenic Greek. Hell, you brought the Egyptian over here and he did very well. He's been good to us. Not to mention honor guard. Gonna move to Emporia. I'm here. Just to make damn sure. I know we haven't got them out of the way, but I just needed to do something. Again, can't watch over everything while I'm present. Until the Punic people are fully integrated. Which they'll come very soon. 
then once they're happy to be integrated, then we can try to please them more. But it's not always guaranteed. And not in the mood of integrating Romans, but they are mainly Hellenic, so they're fine. Impreg I impregnate her. Oh boy. And how old am I? Oh, that's Alexandros, you go. 56. Oh, that's pretty risky. If it is a son, well, there's trouble. If it's a daughter, well, just keep your hopes up that she'll be a good girl. Not to mention, this is the first child that's going to be, you know, half the Ocean Greek and half Carian. Where do the Carians come from, anyway? What region? What province? Did the Carians... Over here. Ah, of course, Karia. That's here. Karia. So, Southwest Anatolia. Southwest Asia, Southern Asia, next to Silesia. That's where they came from. Here. So we assume from the city of Nysa. From the Gautama family. What? They declared war on us. Alarm. Everybody's over here, but um, we have to. Oh, this is bad timing. It's the worst timing. We have the money, so we were able to funnel all that. Um, about to fight in the major war. What do they want? Silk it. In other words, they want cartridge back. We are unprepared. We did not expect Carthaginian aggression. There's only two armies stationed in Africa. Fortunately, our best one is still around. In other words, pull back. Get out of there now. Head to there. To be safe. Alexandros going to do whatever Alexandros is going to do. Just defend the homeland, all right? We'll have to bring the cavalry over, too, because Carthaginian cohorts tend to be massive, especially when they hire mercenaries. Finally colonize this bit, but... Hey! This is no time to be plotting quietly. Hey you, and get over here. Back. He's depressed. I'm gonna take a dementia. He's not gonna be around for long, so don't worry, we have suitable replacements. Damn it, I'm gonna have to put that guy in, but this one it would be good to have a land general. After all, that man 
was from the Wolf. Just wanted that you support. Get there, your ships, damn it. Hurry. Just, just have to register it. Get down here. Begin your march to the Emporium. Just gonna have to pull back. Just pull back a little. Assume that um, Carcadon will fall, but. We'll come back and we take this area. We did not expect them to attack us like that. We have the manpower. We can definitely last a world war, but... This is their new capital. Caught hot dust, meaning new Carthage. New... New Carcadon. Again, legitimacy is called into question. And there's about to be a child soon. Okay, oh yeah, we will have a an episode dedicated to this conflict, but we're just this is just an early basis. Um, so they'll get everything, but we'll be back. <laughs> Heck, write that in the Punic language, which is an integrated people now. Write them in a language that they're gonna understand. Write them in both Greek and Punic languages, which it'll say, we'll be back. That's what's written in the graffiti on these walls, especially in Karkadon. We'll be back. Keep it tidy. That also means this is a ripe opportunity to take all these city-states, all these subjects of Carthage. And our original objective was for this upcoming conflict, which is coming early now, is to increase all after this, but don't go deep into Numidia. Just keep them away. And here's another reason. Want to know what child is this going to be? As we, you know, decided to pull back and wait for reinforcements. Just let them fight. But hey. Rome's not going to attack us during this course of the war. The Persian Empire is not eager to attack us either. Though if they do attack us, then... Well, again, we can't watch over everything. As per orders, wait for further reinforcements. When we are here, then that's when... Take long. Karkadon has fallen. Assume that Karkadon has fallen. Well, we left them a parting gift, one would think, as we mentioned of what we're trying to say here. We never had a time to build. We never had a time to build in or improve fortifications. There's not even that much of a garrison here, so it's just not going to do. They're outnumbered. And they got some good generals already. Sometimes the due date goes a little bit overdue. Again, I did not want to force march because of the low morale. I don't want troops coming in with low morale. It'll be bad. Admiral first. It's a fast transport fleet. 
Okay, it's another daughter. So yeah, got your baby sister. And it doesn't look like um, her stats have improved as of yet. That, that means that's another pretender, correct? In this line of succession? Yes. And nobody would support her. Right. Although, Glycare sounds like a totally odd name. I don't know if that's even Greek or Karin, I'm not sure, because I've never seen that name before. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of a name we do not typically see around here in, in this um, country. Talk about genders. We look at all the women of the Hellenic League. Some are foreign, but also Greek. A Greek name. I was just trying to think of a, a female Greek name that I do not typically see based on you know this current generation because I have a one in mind but one that's not often seen Scroll through one more time. Okay, not all the women here are Greek. I got it. Only because I like the name. <laughs> ah, let me see, let me see. <laughs> Spell it correctly. Cleopatra. Yes. Cleopatra. It's typical. It happens a lot where we often have like if, like if there's going to be a female ruler or a pretender of it of the same throne, we usually have one named Cleopatra. Yes. It's just something. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We'll end the episode on that note because um, we want to leave it on the cliffhanger. As we said. Um, it looks like it's the North African campaign all over again. But this time, Carthage will have the early advantage of taking most of the occupied territory. But this will be different, where we've started off from Serenica and worked our way up, but we never had time to build fortresses, but they have the advantage that they got a few border fortresses. But we'll be taking all these city-states And these areas, that's where we plan on expanding it from. Carthage has full manpower. They're ready for war. And so are we. It's just we're slightly caught off guard and a bit behind the schedule. Because we were getting set to finish the Romans off in Italia, but... No. Nope. Carthage decides to attack. And we hope the Syracusans can contribute by doing something with Sicily. So again, Carthage wants this area here. But in actuality, they want all of this back. And more. Look, if we sue for peace now, what do they actually want? That suggests you... It what they really want is Emporia, Cartago, and this. So they want all of this back. Well, they're going to have to fight for it in the next episode. In which is going to be, the, you know, Carthage's revenge early on. Before we will strike them back with the full might of the Hellenic League. 
And of course, Alexandros won't do a damn thing because we're not going to transport his happy over there. Can't even bribe him, man. So, he can at least defend Greece. see most of more troops to be transported and shipped off to uh, to uh, Africa so we shipped off to Africa and then we're gonna fight in another massive war which is gonna cause horrific casualties on both sides but hopefully we'll prevail in this next episode and hopefully the Hellenic League will prevail because it is possible that the future Silas of the Hellenic League will be Heraclea which skills has not improved as she is going to become a politician and hopefully have a good personality traits but we'll know more during the course of the war and we hope you people will join us in the defense of Kakadon even though it's already fallen but we'll get it back we'll be back and we hope you people will be back but until then so long for now <laughs>